Welcome back to Dan 91's Garage. This week it's been a bit of a mixed bag. We started off playing with the bumper and everything was going great. Okay, so we're at the point now where the intercooler's in. We've got our cold pipe coming around this side and a hot pipe going in from the turbo. So if we chuck the bumper back on, we can now see how much we need to trim up. I just want to make sure before I go any further with the pipe work that it's even going to fit behind the bumper without looking totally stupid. So. so. Obviously it's going to be touching, so you need to find out where that is and then start somewhere. So I've hooked it on the top up here, and we can see that the bolt holes here are roughly lined up. So the first part that's hitting is obviously this reinforcement rib here, so we're going to get rid of that completely. I mean, if I stick my finger there, I've got about, I don't know, slightly less than that, about 10 or 15 mil to go before this touches down here. And this is the thing that's holding it off. So basically when this moves 10 mil, 15 mil that way, this has to be all clear. So the thickness of that is gonna have to go completely, I think. So chop that one out. And then on this side, we're being held off at the moment by this pipe. for the cold side. So at the moment that's gonna to be touching touching in this area so probably end up marking up where the bottom of that is and here it's stood off a bit more so we're talking perhaps 15 or 20 mil before this bolts back to where it should be so yeah mark up where the bottom of that is gonna have to cut a scoop out of this and also this rib here probably just take that up to here and then cut it off to this corner because you're never gonna see it from the uh, the top anyway so that's cool and then we're gonna have to start working this area as well. Our next area here is touching. We can see that's touching already on the hose, so gonna to have to come across here with that as well. Probably scoop up a bit of this, go up here and uh, maybe even have to scoop out a bit of this as well. But we'll see, we'll start at the beginning. There's gonna be lots of bumpers on and off. So I'll get a bit of it done till we get down to stage two. And then we'll take it from there, I guess. So this is the third or fourth time it's been on and off the car for a bit of extra sanding. So just need a little bit more in this corner by the looks of it to clear the end of the uh, cold side hose. Down under this side. We're obviously very close here still, but once I've taken it back to this pen line, that should clean that up. So we won't be touching there. Thankfully now we're down here where we needed to be as far that way as the bumper needs to go. The same here, this area is now touching down. And as we can see, there's plenty of clearance under there. We're clear here. Just need to sort this one corner out basically. So there's a bit more to come out just around this edge for a bit more clearance. I'm trying to get about five or six mil clear from this to any any part of it because if it's sort of vibrating and rubbing as it goes down the road it will just eat its way through it doesn't matter this is plastic and this is aluminium it will still erode through it slowly so there we go also this whole sort of 
area across the top here, just in front. That needs another two or three mil off just for general clearance. But the good thing is now that it's started to touch down in places where it needs to be, we can see a lot easier how much clearance we've actually got. So you just start somewhere and then slowly start taking pieces off. So that's cool. I'm glad this is all right here. It doesn't seem to be touching the pipe either in this corner. If I push it harder, you can feel it go back and touch the pipe. But at the moment we're touching down here and the bottom mount is ready line, already lined up um, and we're not touching the pipe. So that was, that was my biggest fear. That obviously as this bumper sort of curves round and down, you end up with the pipe going out the corner and round to go into the engine bay. And obviously there's, I can't make the pipe smaller. I can't sort of dress back this, the metal area anymore for that. And I don't want to cut like a big hole here for a pipe to stick out or anything. So yeah, thankfully it all seems to be lining up without looking too hacked up. Not sure whether I'm going to put the number plate back here or do something different or whether I cut this out or whatever, but I think it still looks quite cool. I've taken out, like I say, the verticals and I don't think it looks stupid or anything. So yeah, one more final round of trimming and then I think she'll be done. So I thought I might as well show you the back of it because it's a lot easier to see what's gone on. So in this lower section, I took out all five of the vertical supports because there was no need for those. There was a couple of tabs here that were on the other end of these two. And obviously if I've got no supports there, I didn't need the tabs, so they came off. Notched out this side for the hot pipe, notched out this side for the cold pipe. Then moving across here, I needed about 12 mil off of this, I believe. So sanded that down, with the disc sander then up to these two and across here again because this was in front of where the intercooler was perhaps five or six mil off of these and a little bit of notch in the corner just to help with the pipe work this side and then again we come across here and have to notch this out for the intercooler itself as the intercooler sits about there so once those have been notched out everything seems to clear by about five or six mil there are another couple of verticals in this area here across the top and uh, once I've notched these out, there wouldn't have been much of them left, so I removed those as well. So this is where the bumper bar fits in, and obviously the intercooler is below that. So now this is all done, we can go and put it up on the car, and I'll give you a quick look at it on the vehicle. The other good thing, like I said, with that mount lined up with the hole in the front cross member, if I grab the intercooler pipe under here, you can obviously see there's a decent amount of movement before it wants to hit anything, so it's not pinned to it, so it's not constantly going to be rubbing around under there. So, yep, yeah, there we go. Not half bad. So yeah, just some of the tools I used. So I used a Dremel with a small cut-off wheel to chop anything that I could get to. And obviously the rest of it was done with the sanding wheel on the angle grinder. So that took off the majority of the plastic. That was quite easy. And the detail work to do the pipes and stuff to cut the notches and everything. I just used the carbide burr on the cheap ass die grinder again. Stanley knife to deburr stuff to scrape it along the edges to get rid of all the flash and burr that you create. And uh, yeah, a file for the bits you can't get to. Pretty simple stuff, really. And then it was time to start playing with this contraption. Things didn't go quite to plan. So we've got to relocate the actuator because originally the actuator wanted to be here, which is where the short route 
hot pipe is coming out and then turning down. So the problem is, obviously I'm gonna have to make a bracket, which isn't too difficult. So I've got a slightly different actuator that you can actually bolt onto stuff. So I can take that off and make my own custom plate. Now I've had to extend it with all of this jiggery pokery just for a bit of a trial, but the problem is the actuator lever here at the back is off at an angle. But if you look at it as well, the bottom plate here is slightly twisted back. It's intentional, it's not happened by accident. That's actually been done at the factory. But that means that this pin is actually at a slight angle backwards that way as well. So when we attach this, the original actuator would be here and it would be pushing basically set at sort of 90 degrees roughly to this lever. So when we're pushing this and it's turning, it only rises up perhaps eight mil, pulling the lever that way. When we put it on up here and try and do the same thing, it rides up a hell of a lot more so the problem is it may end up binding up in here plus we're also trying to bend this against the spring and the diaphragm in here and what with this pin being slightly angled off compared to where this is actually trying to rotate from it really starts to bind up here when i put the circlip on i've been through it so many times now i'm kind of sick of looking at it so basically we're at the point now where we're going to change so I'm not thrilled about it, but the option is we either go for an external wastegate, and obviously the external wastegate would have to be chopped in here, weld on another pipe. The external wastegate itself is about 350 quid, and that's money I just don't have to spend on this project, unfortunately. In the interest of keeping it simple, we're gonna have to go back, and we're gonna change to a traditional route for the hot pipe. So, there's probably a very good reason that people do that. So we're gonna rotate this back down, which is quite easy to do. Obviously the core's clocked incorrectly now, but we can always re-clock that in a bit. So we're gonna point him down there. Tighten that back up again. Snip it up so it's not going anywhere. So this is a standard actuator. This one's actually from Boffy Racing because the original one that came with this particular turbo was obviously bent and knackered on delivery. If you haven't watched the uh, delivery and unboxing video, then it's available on the channel for you to peruse after this one if you want. Anywho, so that's back on there and basically pretty much that's kind of in the standard configuration for a Subaru. So on the Subaru, obviously this flange at the back here sits horizontal on the up pipe and the turbo outlet pipe goes off sideways at 90 degrees. So we're pretty much within sort of five or 10 degrees of where it was intended to be from the factory. So now the actuator's sorted, we can look at clocking the turbo, but that's coming up on next week's episode. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you then.